Hello everyone, welcome to the Force Plate Coach YouTube channel. My name is John McMahon and in this video I'm going to tell you how you can calculate body weight using Microsoft Excel and it does include a downloadable and free Microsoft Excel spreadsheet which will be in the description of the video just below. So I do encourage everybody that's watching this video if possible for you to get out your laptops and to follow along uh, via Microsoft Excel. This will allow you to go through the same process that I'm going to demonstrate in the video um, and also, obviously you'll need your laptops anyway if you're going to download the Excel spreadsheet to go through and explore how to calculate body weight with some of your own data. So I'm going to cut away from my uh, webcam now and go straight into a screen recording of how to actually go through and calculate body weight using Microsoft Excel. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is going to go to one of my trials that have been recorded for a counter movement jump in the Hawking Dynamics uh, cloud. And you can see that already my system weight, which is the term that's referred to a combined body weight plus any external weight that's being lifted, or in the case of unloaded counter movement jumps or any unloaded test for that matter, then the system weight, as far as Hawking Dynamics are concerned, refers to the body weight. So you can see already that that says that I'm at 814 newtons, so approximately 80 kilograms. Um, what we're going to do though is we're going to go through and download this data and then run it through Excel just to show anybody that's dealing with raw force data how they can easily calculate body weight or indeed system weight for themselves. So I'm just going to click on export. I'm going to extract just the force trace alone. And once downloaded, that will save as a CSV file, so a .csv file, which you can open up quite easily with Excel. If it doesn't open up by default, straight from wherever you've saved it, um, presumably in your downloads, and if you right click and click open with and just select Excel from the programs, and it should open up similar to what I'm seeing right now. Now what you can see already is, is that you've got a time column in A, you've got left and right leg forces in B and C, and then you've got combined force in D. And that is just literally summing those two left and right forces together. What I'm going to do is I'm going to extract uh, just this vertical force of the summed vertical force component and I'm going to paste it into an Excel document. And the reason I'm going to do that is because some people might be using different systems and you might only end up with that raw force data uh, just however, however many seconds it's been collected for um, ju just as one single column. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click Command shift and down or control shift and down if you are using a Windows laptop and command or control and C to paste and I'm literally just going to paste it. I'll stick it in B5 for now. I'm just going to paste it in there so command and V. I'm going to label that force because this is going to lead into a bigger database that we're going to build um, that will analyze additional variables rather than just body weight which I'm only going to show in this video. Um, so what we basically got, if I just press command shift and down again and just plot that for a second, if I just insert a graph, I'll do it as a simple line graph for now. You can see what counter movement jump force time trace looks like. Um, what we're interested in, if you've seen my previous video about the importance of weighing athletes, is this weight which is shown as this blue, let me make this a little bit bigger, this blue horizontal line during the first one second. So we haven't got it scaled to time yet, this is just a line graph that's just selecting the force data in of itself, but it corresponds to a thousand data points because it's collected at 1000 hertz. So there's a thousand samples in a second, and we're looking for this nice stable body weight trace that I referred to in the previous video. And we just want to calculate what the average force is over that period. Um, so let me just delete that for now. What we're going to do, if I go back up to the, to the top, let me drag that up there, we'll be here all day. I'm going to put in a time function here and we're going to put that in seconds. And what I'm not going to do is just list the time in um, one millisecond increments because that's what each of these different units of force represent in terms of unit of time, it'd be one millisecond in between each one, is I'm going to limp it, link it to the sample frequency. And this is because some people will use different sample frequencies. We advocate 1000 Hertz. Um, but it may be that you've collected a little bit higher and if you do change it we can link the time calculation in this column so from A5 down to the sample rate that's been used so if I just put in a thousand Hertz there and then go down to B5 we can put in a zero to begin with because we start at time zero and then we can do equals one divided by at the sample frequency and that's going to break that down into that 0.001 second or one millisecond like I said before unit of time 
um, that we're after. And then what we can do is then we can do equals and we can add the time above uh, plus 0 0.001 millisecond. And the way we can do that is if we just lock in um, this first cell and we do that by placing dollar signs around the actual cell number, uh, letter, sorry. So in this case, A. So if you put dollar signs on either side, it's gonna lock in that cell. If I drag that down, all that's doing now, if I just click on the formula, is it's gonna add the cell above, which is 0 0.02, 0 0.002 I should say, plus the time interval that we want in between each of these different samples, which is this locked in cell, which is equal to a value of 0 0.001 second. And then we can just simply click on that bottom right hand corner where you can see the little square, and that's gonna fill that down and it's going to fill for the duration of the test that's been done. So if I just scroll down quickly, if I take that down to where our data ends, you'll see that this data has been collected for just over six seconds. So to be precise, 6.082 seconds of data that's been collected. And that represents that squiggly line, that counts movement jump force time curve more accurately, I should say, uh, that I showed you right at the start. The reason I've done it this way is, if we now change the sample frequency up here, so if anybody's watching, and they end up sampling at 500 hertz, for example, then it's gonna automatically change the time interval to the correct time interval in between each of the different four samples that have been collected. Same if it's 2000 hertz or whatever it might be, these are just fairly typical ones, it's gonna automatically update this time interval. So that's gonna make life a little bit easier if it does come to processing data, um, not just with respect to body weight like we're doing in this video, but how it feeds in then to some time related variables going forward. The next thing I'm going to do is put in a new column and that is going to contain the uh, sample number and that's because we can use index and match functions not just to establish body weight but also to feed into some more sophisticated analyses as, as we go through these different videos and so the sample number is literally going to start at number one and just follow that entire set of data that we've got there uh, so going to over 6,000 samples that we saw when we looked at where the time went to earlier what we can now do is, is calculate the body weight and we can link it to the sample frequency that we include in. So again, it automatically updates depending on which sample frequency has been used. So I'm just gonna put body weight up here in Newtons and it doesn't really matter where I place it for now. We can put it somewhere more convenient later on. And what we're gonna do is equals and take the average because we're interested in that average force over that first one second when the athlete's remaining completely still. I'm gonna open a bracket and then I'm going to open up another bracket and we're going to select the force data. So starting in column B5, command or control shift and down to select the force data. And then we're going to put in a comma. comma. And then I'm just going to come up to the top so you can see what I'm doing because it's going to automatically take me down to where that force data ends. We're going to select then the sample one. So what is this basically going to do? It's going to search through this column of force data and it's going to find us um, from where we've selected it here, which force data is representative column one. We're gonna then put in a close bracket, a colon, we're gonna type index again, open a bracket again, select the same force data again, which you can either do by doing what I did a minute ago, which is command or control shift and down, or given you've got the formula window just there and it's open, you could just paste that right in just there. And then this time, when we put in the comma, we're gonna select where our sample frequency is. And then we're gonna close a bracket and we're going to close another bracket and hit enter and that's going to give us our body weight but just going back to that formula for a second just to explain it in more detail like i said a minute ago we select in if i just open that up the force data and we're looking for what the force data uh, where number one begins our sample number one begins so the very first sample if you like of force data that we've got here and then we're looking then for where the 1000th data point is so that would be scanning all the way through this column in column c all the way down to where it's at 1000 and what that basically then is doing is taking the average of the forces that are shown in column b from b5 down to b6087 and giving us the average between the very first sample and the 1000th sample and that's giving us that value of 813 newtons um, and we, we can reduce that down. It doesn't have to be, it can be to the nearest whole number if you want, which kind of brings it in line with what Hawking Dynamics had. 
or you can do it to multiple decimal places. I'm going to keep it to one whole number. The reason I've done it that way, similar to the time function over here, is that if we collect our data with different sample frequencies, so we go back to 500 again, it's going to give us a slightly different number now for the body weight. It's effectively for us only weighing this athlete over half a second now, because um, we've actually collected over 1,000 samples, haven't we, in this situation. Um, but if we hadn't, that would be reflective of one second because there's 500 samples per second being collected. And then same, if we go up to 2000, this is totally going to screw it up in this case, but if you were sampling at 2000 hertz, then 2000 samples in would represent the end of your one second weighing period because again, you're getting 2000 samples a second. Okay, so that's going to bring that down slightly because I imagine that at two seconds in for me, I'm already going through what we call the waiting phase after the counter movement jump's already begun. So I'm going to reset that there and put it back to 1000. Um, I'm just going to quickly, let's highlight this column in bold, uh, bold rather, and we'll put this in bold and this in bold just so it stands out a little bit more. Like I say for now, it doesn't really matter where this data is being placed because we're going to add more to this as we go through in subsequent videos. So this is just the very start. We always start with getting the athlete's body weight first just like we do when we cure the athlete before we do the actual test. This body weight will then feed forward into creating some start thresholds to work out when the jump actually began. And then it will also feed forward into our forward dynamics procedures to generate some other variables of interest. And I'm going to cover that in subsequent videos. So this spreadsheet is going to be available to download for free, just underneath in the description of this video. So if you want to download at this stage, even though this is a very basic start, you can at least then go through, have a play around with the spreadsheet yourself. If you've got some data that you've collected with a different sample frequency, then if you literally just copy and paste your data, so your vertical force data, in column uh, B5, or in cell B5, I should say, and overwrite what's there, or perhaps delete out first and add it in, you can adjust your sample frequency according, uh, accordingly, and it will automatically update the time and this body weight value over here, obviously, because it reflects a different force trace. Um, equally, if you've collected data at 1000 Hz and you want to drop in a sample force trace of your own, then just again, make sure if you are going to paste over this data set that you've at least exceeded the number of samples that I've got here. Otherwise, you'll end up with my little bit of force at the end of the jump being appended to your force data if you've collected for five seconds, for example. So it might be best to actually delete that out and then just copy your and paste your data straight in. Okay, I'll, I'll, um, I'll leave it there. So thank you for watching the video, hopefully you found it useful and you can now download the Excel spreadsheet which you'll find in the video description below. As ever my Twitter and Instagram handle are showing on the screen so it's at ForcePlateCoach. Please feel free to follow me via those two different platforms and also to post any questions there too or in the comments below and if you haven't done already please consider subscribing to the channel. Speak soon.